Hello folks. Well you know I have really been totally obsessed with catapult launching of aircraft after spending time out on the USS Midway aircraft carrier in 1976. It was really exciting out there I could tell you that. Well that's where I learned exactly how the steam cats worked, how the aircraft were held during run-up and how they were released. So of course I became obsessed with catapulting my RC planes when I got home just for fun. These are pictures of my very first version catapult, the V1, that I invented for myself in 1982. It was a little complicated, and uh, but it worked really well, and I used it for all my glow fuel-powered planes. Well, many of you longtime subscribers remember, like 13 years ago, I began making product reviews for Nitro Planes RC Jets, and also decided just for fun to make another catapult, and it became known as the V2. Well, we launched all kinds of planes and objects from it, and it really worked well and was a lot of fun. Well, then when I started making my pop wing videos, when they came on the scene, I felt the pushers and the props are kind of close to my hand, so began using my catapult for that. I mean, that was really fun, first of all, and it made for really very low-stress, easy takeoffs. Well, also, as many of you know, it was destroyed in that fire along with all my jets and planes in 2016. Well, today, now, what, five years later, I never figured I'd ever need to make another catapult since I don't have any of those foam jets anymore. But then my wife got me that giant 7-foot wingspan Optera 2M for Christmas. It's big and heavy and fun to fly, but no matter how good a person is at doing something, nothing is 100%, and that one night that gust of wind caught me and tipped the plane just enough which was too close to my finger, and it nailed me. Well, after that, I thought, well, I'm just going to build a dolly. I didn't want to go to all the trouble making another catapult. Well, it worked, but just not perfect enough for me, and it was just too hard and big to carry in the car. That's when I finally decided to make my catapult again. This one is the Nightflyer Apult version 3, V3. So these are the parts I used to make it. I already had the launch rail made to launch my F-27 Evolution, so all I had to do was add the rubber launch system. So I did the same way that I did before because that system worked. Well, the length was determined by my van's cargo areas it had to fit in. The wood is 8 foot long and I have 10, so all good. I used heavy-duty keychain rings for capturing the angled wire on the plane. I knew I wanted bigger pulleys this time, and I had to find some that would fit that rubber, and I actually find these pulleys down at Ace Hardware. Well, the rubber I used is the best I ever found for my use. It's high-quality mandrel dip latex tubing and is made in the USA and one of only two manufacturers for this type of tubing in the country. It has more stretch and retraction of any of the other rubber I've ever used. I mean, I've tried surgical tubing and spear gun rubber, but this really works the best for its small size. I got it from aerofoam.com. I'll put a link in the description box if you ever need any. I only use five and a half feet for the self-contained launcher and the rest I use for the conventional launch system. Well, I made my release mechanism like this by just simply cutting, heating, and squeezing PVC in the vise. Well, there's lots of ways to do this for sure, but I don't research anything so not to be influenced or biased when I make a video. I should have noticed the height of my old one. I find my Optera does better when it's higher, hence my portable height enhancer. <laughs> Well, this is the transport mode. I have a screw at the top to hold the rubber in place. So, of course, I also needed a hook on the plane. I make them with music wire and have inserted a piece of ply epoxied into the plane. So now let's look back at a few launches from the V2 and let's see the two types of launches, both with my F27S Solution and my Optera 2M with the version 3. But first, here's a few launches that you might remember to take you back and also a way to compare my version 2 to my version 3. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Caraca! Nice catch. Yep, it's on. This thing needs a little more altitude, so I'm going to set it up on this. <laughs> okay, that all worked really good, so now we're going to try the second mode of operation. That's using the conventional rubber and stake launch. As you see, it's quite a bit more time consuming and work to set up the bungee launch this way. First you have to stake the bungee into the ground so it won't move, then find a suitable place to tie the far end of the bungee to. And the excess rubber and the fluorescent string I had left over is all I needed to make this. Of course, the disadvantage is that you can't move it as easily as my self-contained version, but it also works great because of the pulley at the end of the launcher.
Turn the motor on. Hey, yes! Well folks, this is really fun, and with the self-contained version, I can aim it into the wind anyway, and I don't have to worry about anything. I really enjoy it, and I hope you do too. There are many ways to cut a pizza, and this was just my way, and you know what? Works for me.